Hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on NRV Outdoors. Today we're here at one of our favorite trophy trout streams and as you can see here in front of us guys we have got a winter melt off and a good bit of flooding going on. And I wanted to share with you guys today how I like to catch fish in these flooded conditions and kind of how to break down the creek, find the fish and then get them to feed. So let's not waste any time guys, let's hop in this video, let's have some fun fishing in this flooded little creek. One of my go-to baits when the water is up and muddy like this is that simple Joe's flies, that 3.5. I really do like that gold blade and I like that black body. And I'll tell you why guys, this particular Joe's fly here is weighted. It gets down there really well. It's got that nice blade that'll flash a little bit and cause a lot of vibrations just to let the fish know that it's there. And then that black gnat on the bottom there guys, it really silhouettes well underneath the water and when it's murky. There's only a couple colors that will show up well under the water while it's colored up and black is by far one of the best. And it's simply because it casts a shadow better and the fish can see it. So they come over and they see that nice gold blade and they're attracted to that vibration. And then they run into that little black gnat there and they spot that. And once they see that, they go on ahead and get it. So let's not waste any time. Let's cast this thing around a little bit and I'll explain to you guys kind of what I look for in a flooded creek to catch some fish. All right, guys, whenever you're at a spot like this one here, as you can see, we've got water rushing to our left down into this pool. It's creating a bit of a back eddy right here, and it's rushing on around this edge and heading downstream. But what's happening is all of the main current is just here in front of us. So if you look out here, out further in the hole, there's barely any current flowing. It's kind of eddying back in there. And odds are, if there's any fish in this little run, they've escaped to that slacker area because fighting this current right here for a very long period of time is very strenuous, especially on creek style fish. So they know to get over into some slacker stuff. So we'll bomb a couple casts in this hole just over there into that slack area. We'll give it a few tries and then we'll continue to move around. This spot, in my opinion, isn't ideal, but if you're at a spot and this is all you've got, guys, this will definitely work. You just got to put it into that slacker water and just see what happens. This is one of our favorite spots on the creek right here. And as you can see, the current is ripping just in front of us underneath this old tree. And it's whipping around and heading to the right right here, guys. But as you can see in this particular pool right here, it's a big wide pool and it kind of shallows off up there. Now what'll happen when you get a lot of current, guys, is in areas where the water's pinched, just like right here, you'll pick up a lot of current. And that big pinched amount of current is going to push itself straight down into the hole in a direct area. So what'll happen guys in a big spot like this is you've got a lot of current right here in front of us. And then just to the left, there's very little because that major majority is heading right up this right hand side. So odds are if there's a trout in this hole, he's gonna put himself just to the left hand side of this big current. He's just gonna lay right there. And odds are it's gonna be right up against the bottom, just looking for anything that's coming by that he can grab easily uh, while he's just kind of fighting the current over there. So we'll make a few casts to it and we'll see what happens. So guys, one of the best analogies I like to tell new anglers when it comes to fish in muddy water is just imagine that you're in your room in your house and you're just kind of standing in the middle of the room and then all of a sudden all the lights go out and it's just pitch black dark, guys. That kind of black dark that you just can't see right in front of your face. So that's kind of what these fish are dealing with. So then imagine, guys, you're standing in your room and the lights go out. What is the first thing you're going to do? You're going to reach around. You're going to try to find something solid, whether it be a wall or your bed or whatever it may be in your room. You're going to try to find something to touch and lean up against, something you can orientate where you are in the room. That's exactly what happens to these big trout, guys. The, the, as soon as that water comes up and it begins to get dingy, they'll slowly start to migrate to more safer locations. And eventually what will end up happening is as the kind of lights go out and as the water muddies to the point that they can no longer see in front of them, they'll find something they can lean up against. So if you can find a big rock like this tree right here with these big roots, anything that you can find that the fish are going to orient to and try to use as cover will really help you out. So remember guys, if you're fishing in muddy water, just to simply find something that the fish can get up against. A place where there's not a whole lot of current where they can escape some of that current, but also a place where they can bump up against something because they want to be able to orient themselves to something just to know that they're retaining their spot and they're not getting washed downstream. So if you look right here in front of us, this creek has got a pinch point right here. And as you can see, it's just rolling super fast. As it comes out of the chute, it literally keeps its momentum in that same direction and it loops clear around this hole to the outside, making just a huge, big, deep pool eddy right here in front of us, guys. So what I wanna do is I wanna just cast around the spinner right along this little deep pool eddy right here. And uh, odds are if there's any fish that was in this run or that's getting washed downstream, because this kind of current, guys, will move fish downstream. If they lose their position, 
odds are they're going to kind of wash down. They'll fight against it, but they'll end up in a spot like this. And once they get in a spot like this, guys, as you can see at the end of this run, it kind of calms down, especially considering what it's like in this first pinch point right here. So the fish will kind of move back out of that into this little deep eddy. They'll find a place most likely near the bottom where they can touch their belly to the floor of the creek. And uh, they'll just kind of hang out there. So we'll make a few casts with our spinner. Then we'll move on to the next bait that I think is probably the best for fishing in muddy water if you can find eddies in places where the water isn't rushing. So we'll make a few more casts with the spinner, guys, then we'll move on to it. We'll see if we can get us one. I would like to say, guys, this creek has not been stocked in several days, and this creek was extremely flooded within the last 48 hours, way higher than it is now. So there's not a guarantee we'll catch anything, but I would like to just kind of explain to you guys how you can target this kind of fishery and uh, just have some fun. Alrighty guys, the next bait on our list is probably the best trout bait, no matter the conditions, but I really think it does shine and gets a few extra bites when the conditions are tough like they are today. And that is dough baits, guys. As you can see, I've got the jar of simple fire bait here, as well as a jar of power bait. And as you can see, these are extremely bright colors, guys. I really like the brighter colors while the water's muddy like this. Pretty obvious just because they can see it. But guys, whenever you're in a situation like this right here where you've got this all this fast current, they're not willing to chase your spinner, they don't want to come up off the bottom, this is the best option. All you're going to want to do, guys, is look for a spot just like we've got in front of us here where you've got a big eddy where you can just add a couple weights, still get it down there, still get your bait to hold the bottom, and still get a chance to catch a couple fish. I don't like to use a very big ball while the water is up like this, guys, and that's because this stuff is extremely buoyant and it's gonna to try to float away on you. So if you have a whole lot on your hook, odds are the bait is gonna rise up, begin to float, and it's just gonna simply float away from wherever that you're trying to put it. So make a very small little ball, then just simply cast it out into any eddies you find along the creek, and then just hold on, guys. All right, guys, something I really love about dough bait is you can kind of see what's going on down there, and if you look closely at this ball, it's covered in teeth marks, so that must mean we're around at least one fish down there because those teeth marks definitely don't happen by floating and drifting debris. So we're gonna have to just kind of be patient, uh, continue to cast around. Those teeth marks did appear in this little section right here, guys. So we'll just drop it back in there and we'll hope that whatever came over and gave that thing a bite, we're going to hand do it again and hold on to it a little better. All right, guys, I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I thought this little spot right here was just perfect for this particular dough bait technique. Now, as you can see here, guys, just like I mentioned earlier, we've got our water coming around this old tree root right here, and it's rushing on by, and it's creating a nice little back eddy right up against the bank right here in front of us. So what I'm thinking is if there is a trout hanging out right here, he's probably gonna be right up against the bank here where it's nice and safe, just kinda hanging out not even two foot from the bank, if I had to guess. So this is just a perfect place to try out your dough bait, drop a little ball of it in there, and just see if somebody will come over and get it. So what I'm thinking is we haven't had any luck in these little eddies over here. So I popped on a little bit heavier weight onto my line there. Still just two, but one's a little bit heavier. And I'm going to put just the tiniest little ball of dough bait, just enough to cover up the hook. And I'm going to pop it straight into the current over here, guys. And what I'm going to see is if just on the outside of the current seam over here, if there's any trout hanging out. And if there are, odds are, with that small little ball, it won't drag it past them too fast. It'll give them a chance to see it. And maybe we can get a hook in them. And just let it work right on down. It is working by pretty fast. That is to be expected. We're casting it directly into the current. We're just gonna let it drift on by right here, nice and slow, and just see what happens. Oh, was that a bite? I think that might have been a bite right there, guys. 100% bite. Got him. Got him on, guys. Right in that main current seam over there on the old dough bait. Big old rainbow trout. Heck yeah, guys. Heck yeah. Absolutely crushed that old dough bait. Big old beautiful girl. Oh, she kicked the hook right there. That's okay, guys. We didn't want to keep any fish. I wish y'all could have seen her. She was a gorgeous big rainbow, but she bit that tiny little hook. And once again, guys, all I did was I put on just the smallest little ball of dough bait. I added a little bit of extra weight, and I was casting to the outside of the main current seam, allowing that dough just to bounce on down the creek. Nice and slow-like, 
and that little beauty came over and absolutely crushed it guys heck yeah well walking up to this hole guys reminds me of a really solid point that i think you guys should probably know about as you guys have seen in my videos before this spot right here is just an awesome little spot to fish but if you observe this hole being that it's up today and muddy you'll notice that the water's flowing in from the left it's all the way up here to the bank on both sides flowing heavily it's flowing straight into that wall over there it's eddying back really strongly over here coming back into the current and washing down now what's happening here guys is as it's hitting this wall it's creating eddies in all sorts of directions you got one coming back against this wall you've got one coming around and looping right here and if you look right here in front of us the water's kind of bubbling up that's actually the center of this big eddy being created so what my point is guys is in a spot like this although this is an extremely productive spot when the creek is at normal flow if you look right here guys there's absolutely no chance of catching a fish because the current's moving so fast they're not going to want to live right here and over here there's an eddy that's causing an upward current to the surface they would not want to be here either that only leaves this little bit of slack water to our right over here now odds are there is a fish hanging out in there but there's no way for our presentation to properly fish this hole so although this is an extremely productive hole when the water's up and you've got this spring flooding this is simply a pass up hole there's no need to stop and waste your time and lose your gear to simply keep moving till you find a more conducive spot for the conditions there's another fish guys no way he's got it too let's set the hook on him oh he had it for just a second no actually guys this is terrible i thought i had a bite what was actually happening is i was dragging somebody's treble hook now let me go on ahead and tell you guys what i think about this this right here is the most unsportsmanlike cowardice way to catch a fish i have ever seen be sure to check your state laws because in some places you are allowed to snag carp and certain things but here in my state of virginia guys this is extremely illegal and not only will you lose your fish but you'll lose your fishing license and your right to continue fishing in our state so please guys if you come here do not do this this is by far the worst thing in all of trout fishing by far and it ruins a good time for so many people so please guys don't ever use these if you see anybody doing this just calmly approach them and let them know that it's kind of wrong and you wish they wouldn't do it but keep in mind guys in today's world confrontations can happen and don't start a confrontation over this if you need to contact your dnr or your department of game and just let them know what you found guys this right here is absolutely disgusting and it is an absolute disgrace to our sport guys wow this just makes me sick Let's start off right here in front of us, guys. Literally right here in this little undercut bank. Sometimes they'll get right up in this stuff. No way to know unless you drop on in there for a second. Let's see if somebody comes over and grabs it. Let's get it really close, right up against this undercut bank. Nope, nobody in there. Worth a shot though, guys. Always worth a shot. So let's just pop it right over there. Same scenario as our last fish on the back side of the main current. So let's just see what happens here. I'd like to get our little dough bait ball right up against that undercut bank over there. There we go. There's a good cast. Get it off of that grass. Let it sink. There we go. Keep our rod tip high. Keeping our line out of that current just to kind of help it stay in place longer. Just let that settle in over there. Oh, no way. We've got one, guys got him on heck yeah right over there in that undercut bank right where i told you they should be drop that old doe bait in there guys this little beauty came over and absolutely crushed it for us heck yeah guys it's all about knowing your creek knowing where your fish want to be and then after that guys it's pretty simple even if it's a new creek using the tips i've shared with you today you should be able to break it down pretty easily and catch you a couple stalker trout heck yeah guys look at that little beauty right there 
Oh, looks like she's actually kicked the no, hook still in her mouth. Just slid the sinkers down. Oh, calm down, girl. Calm down. Let's see where you got it. Oh, right on the outside of the mouth, guys. Perfect. We'll be able to release this fish happy and healthy back into the creek. That's always what you want, unless you're looking for a good dinner. There we go. Heck yeah, guys. And there's a beautiful fish right there using our muddy water techniques. It ended up getting us two fish on the hook and one in the net. Let's just let her slide right on out of here and go back home. Take off, little girl. There she goes. She had it right underneath this little eddy right here, guys, right at our feet. She'll probably hang out here for a few minutes till she restages somewhere else in the creek. But there you go, guys. There's one fish in the net. And all we've done is we started off with our spinner, introducing that nice, fast blade, as well as that beautiful little black uh, hook on the back. And we introduced that to them. No interest in anything chasing, coming out and feeding for us. So we switched up to our classic dough bait, which is good under any conditions, guys, be it spring, summer, fall, muddy or clear water, dough bait, you just simply can't go wrong. And uh, we ended up finding some success, guys. So no need to complain there. I had a ton of fun. And uh, I wanna make a couple more casts in here just to see if we can create any more luck at all and see if there's anybody else underneath the undercut bank over there. And uh, then we'll just simply call it a day, guys. Well, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for today's video. Had a little bit of success, not as much as we typically do, but considering the conditions and how poor the water is, I would say it was a really good day. And once again, guys, if you want a chance to win both a couple jars of bright dough bait, as well as a couple of those 3.5 Black Nat Joe's Fly Spinners, simply head down there, drop me a comment. Any comment will do, and it'll be your entry for a chance to win. But get out if you can, guys, and do some fishing and have some fun. But most importantly, be safe and tight lines.